to do the uh, the practice journal. Um, pretty simple. Doesn't need to be anything fancy. That that works. Just snap a picture, email it in, remind, whatever. So how's it going, guys? This is day three. Um, we're hanging in there, yeah. Hopefully you're all keeping stocked up on toilet paper and paper towels. That's kind of, that's, that seems to be the most important thing right now, right? If you've got your toilet paper, you're good. So I hope you've got your toilet paper. We're gonna, we're gonna get playing here. We're gonna warm up a little bit with some open string blues as we're gonna start off pretty much every one of these videos with, just like we, we usually do in class. We're gonna review last week's, last week's, yesterday's, yesterday's scales, the D major scale and the C major scale. Uh, my, my editor yesterday said I, I didn't really do very well there. So we're gonna revisit that C major scale, make sure we're playing all the low twos we need to in that one, none of those F sharps. And then we're gonna, we're gonna play some stuff by ear. We're gonna, I'll play something on my violin back there you play it back, I play, you play, that kind of thing. Simple enough. Let's go. Here's uh, Open String Blues. Remember, if you haven't tuned yet, check out that tuning video down at the bottom of this video lessons page. Uh, it's important that you're in tune so you don't sound bad. Here we go. Let's do some Open String Blues. So, one. just go back and rewind because it's a video. I don't really want to waste the time again here doing it a second time if you can just rewind. So we'll do it once here and we'll move on. Let's do some D major scale. This is the first one we did yesterday starting on the D string. Everybody knows it. It's one, two, three, one open, one, two, three, for violins and violas. Cello, make sure you're using that fourth finger. One, three, four, open, one, three, four. Starting on that open D, let's go four quarter notes at a time. One.
try again, but we'll pick a different rhythm each note. Let's go with our, oh look, a taco rhythm. That's got a dotted quarter note and an eighth note in there. Oh look, a taco. One, two, and a one, two, here we go. Arpeggio. Let's do the arpeggio on an oh look a taco. One, two, and arpeggio. Ready, go. are the first, the third, the fifth, and the eighth note of the scale. So instead of going up the scale by step, we jump up the scale by skips. We skip over some of those notes. Let's do a peanut butter jelly sandwich rhythm. Straight eighth notes, a peanut butter jelly sandwich. On the D major scale, up, back down, and then the arpeggio up and down. If you don't get it the first time, rewind and try it again. A one, two, and a D major, here we go. That was the Oh Look at Taco rhythm. I told you we were gonna do pepper, peanut butter jelly sandwich. Stop there. Peanut butter jelly sandwich. One, two, and a peanut butter jelly sandwich. Back down. Keep it light. from all the lounging around we're doing during quarantine. Just like bust out some peanut butter jelly sandwich. Get that arm going, it'll wake you up. Cool, that was our D major. Let's review some of that C major stuff. You remember for C major, we're starting with our third finger on the G string. The G string, third finger, makes it play a C. And if you're a cello, of course, I'm talking about the fourth finger, making that, that G string play a C. As we go up, make sure we're using those low twos instead of your high twos, because we want the F natural and the C natural. I got it right that time, didn't I? Here we go. One, two, and four quarter notes. Ready, go.
yourself what the arpeggio for a C major scale would be. Take the first note, the third note, the fifth note, and the eighth note. Violins, viola, third finger, first finger, third finger, low two, cellos, you have fourth finger, first finger, fourth finger, two. Let's give that a shot. Arpeggio using four quarter notes. One, two, and here. Did your third slash fourth finger land right in the same place you started? Did it sound like the beginning at the end? I hope it did. Let's do the whole thing. We'll go up, we'll go down, then we'll do the arpeggio up and back down. I don't wanna do that, that peanut butter jelly sandwich nonsense though. That's gonna be too much bow going when we're doing, especially when we get to that arpeggio and you're thinking of those different fingerings. So let's do pepperoni pizza on a C major scale with arpeggio. One, two, and a pepperoni. some dots. I started my line at the first knuckle, the inside of the first knuckle, kind of where my thumb would like point to. Yeah, yeah. And I took that line and I connected it to the tip of my pinky, the tip of my pinky, not the fingerprint of my pinky, the tip of my pinky. So we take that line and we connect it. You can use a straight line. You can just kind of guess. You can do whatever. On the thumb, I have that little black spot kind of on the side next to my thumbnail-ish. Not really on the front. Not really on the thumb print. But kind of the side-ish. I don't know. And we're going we're gonna to take that line and we're going to use that to help pinpoint our bow hold. I know most of you guys are great with your bow holds and they're fantastic. It's always a good idea to review and it's a good idea to show this to your parents because remember what we talked about yesterday, they're pretty much your teachers right now. So your parents need to know what this bow hold looks like so that they can spot you doing this kind of nonsense. I know some of you do that. I know, I've seen it. You usually sit in the back you think I'm not looking because you're in the back row, but I'm looking, right? No. Yeah. So that black line is basically where the bow is touching my fingers. My pinky's on the tip. These other fingers just kind of follow the line. And, and my, my thumb there goes 
in front of that frog's mouth. I hope that makes sense. This is really strange teaching on a video, but good luck. Um, two things to make sure of. Your pinky, we always want that curved, relaxed pinky. Remember, you're using the tip of your pinky. So you're not using your pinky to hold the bow up at all. There's no reason your pinky needs to be underneath. The tip of your pinky is on top. If anything, you can use that pinky to push down and as you straighten the pinky, the bow lifts. That's, that's kind of how we want our grip to work. The other thing that needs to stay bent is your thumb. There it is. Well, how do you angle a thumb on a camera? Does that work, kind of? Yeah, yeah, there we go. There's my thumb. See how my thumb is bent? We don't want that. That's bad. That's good. Bad. Good. Cool? That's your bow hold. When you're playing with the bow, make sure you're using that hold. Now, another thing I wanna show you, the other thing I drew on my other hand, my left hand, this one, that's Shy Guy. Now, now parents, if you're my age or a little older, you might have remembered uh, the show Home Improvement, and we had Wilson, the backyard neighbor. He always stuck his his face up over the, over, over the fence, you could never see his whole face. You could only ever see half of it at a time. He was very shy. This is our shy guy. You might, you might want to call him Wilson. But when we're playing, we want Wilson's head to just be sticking over the fence. He's shy. He's the shy guy. This is happy, excited, let's go out and party. This is like COVID-19, stay at home and isolation guy. Peek out the window. That's all you get right? That's where our thumb needs to be. As we move these fingers up the fingerboard, that thumb needs to stay shy. We don't want to see him poking up here. We're not using our, our, you know, hand there to hold the instrument up. We're using, we're using our, our, our shy guy. There's, there's always going to be room. You should be able to stick your finger in there. There's always room, right? So keep your shy guy poking up. Keep him in there in, in quarantine. Don't let him go out unless he really needs toilet paper. Right? And then our bow hold. Remember those two main things about how we're holding these instruments today. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to play some stuff either on the piano or this violin, and you're just going to repeat it back to me. I'm only gonna tell you the starting note. Whoa. So if I'm playing a D, and you hear a big jump and you see my bow move, you probably know that it was a string crossing up to A, right? If you don't see my bow move that much, you don't see my fingers do anything, I might be staying on the same, same string. If you see only my fingers moving, probably moving up or down that string, right? So I'll play the first note. Well, I'll tell you what the first note is, and then you just gotta repeat after me. It's always gonna be in, in like a, a, a group of four beats. So let's turn a metronome on. That's too fast, let's slow it down. How do I slow it down? I don't know how to slow it down. Oh, there we go, that's how we slow it down. I'm sure you guys can probably hear that. Hopefully it's not too loud. But here's, here's let's, like, let's practice. I'll say something, you repeat. It's always going to be four beats. It might be blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Bleep, 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 bleep. Mm -hmm. Blah, bleep. I think you do too. Here's the D string. I'm starting on a D. You know what? We're off the beat. Hear that? That higher beat? That should be beat one. One, two, three, four. 
one, two, three, four. Let's try it again and I'll do it the right way. I still did it the wrong way, didn't I? Two, three, four, one, two, here we go. Stop there. All right. Very nice. So there's some playing by ear. All right, guys, we are at almost 25 minutes with today's video. So I want to wrap up by letting you know that a couple things. The live streaming, I don't think is going to be working. I film all of these between my iPad and my iPhone. The laptops I have around here aren't very good. And I found out that on YouTube, I can't live stream from a mobile device unless I have a thousand subscribers. I don't even know a thousand people. So, I mean, if you guys want to push on some kind of like big social media, like make Mr. Jakes famous and like we'll get him a thousand subscribers, then we can do live streams or whatever. Cool. I'm not going to push it though. So I'm gonna keep recording these videos daily and putting them up at eight o'clock. I'm gonna get working on that cello thing that we didn't get to yesterday. I've got more time today, we're gonna to figure that out. Probably won't be live streamed. So by the end of the day, I'll make sure I try to get that up onto the webpage under the Broken Cello Project. Um, that's another thing I wanted to mention. I had a few people struggling to find the video page, hopefully you figured it out by now because I sent the link directly to the video page. But on the website, there's the home page and there's all the other websites or web pages attached to that home page with the assignments, with Oregon Trail, with video lessons, with stuff about the Zoom lessons that we'll be starting up next week. Um, so check out that whole web page. I think the problem is people were on mobile. And when they go on like a phone, just to that first web page, it's kind of hard to find the other pages. But there's in the top right hand corner of your phone, there's a there's a button to push, and you you click that, it shows everything that's on the website. Oh, uh, what else? Turning stuff in. I know we kind of talked about it with that that video ahead of time. Um, turning in your practice log. Don't make anything too complicated, you know? If you've got if you've got a physical copy or a physical practice log, just snap a picture of it and you can email that picture to me. You can send it right directly on Remind. I think with Remind you can do it in like three clicks of a button. It's not it's not super tough. Um, so check that out. Figure out how you can send pictures or documents or whatever, however you're keeping track of your practice. And uh, again, in that video at the beginning, you saw how simple of an entry it was. How much time are you practicing? What kind of things are you practicing? If you can do 15, 20 minutes a day, 
in addition to watching these videos and playing along with us, I think that's going to keep you busy and you're going to, it's going to keep your fingers and your chops fresh for when we get back to school next year. Uh, I'm sure there's something else I probably should have added in this video, uh, but any questions, comments, snide remarks, email my way uh, or remind and we'll, we'll get back with you. We'll see you guys next time.